Good morning. Class of 2023, transfer students, Eli Whitney students, and visiting international students, welcome to Yale. I am Marvin Chun, a Dean of Yale College, and I'm so pleased to be with you uh, here the, on this beautiful morning. Uh, joining me on stage to greet you are President Peter Salovey, uh, Provost Ben Polak, Secretary Kim Goff Cruz, Faculty of Arts and Sciences Dean Tamar Gendler, Graduate School Dean Lynn Cooley, Athletic Director Vicki Chun, the Yale Alumni Association's Executive Director Wei Li Chang, Officers of the University, Heads and Deans of Residential Colleges, and Deans and Members of the Yale College Dean's Office. Family members and friends who are here today, uh, we extend our warm welcome to you and we thank you for everything that you have done to support and guide these young adults. In my role as Dean, one of my jobs is to support President Salovey's mission for Yale to be the research university most committed to teaching and learning. What that means for you students is that I am here to make sure that you get the best of what Yale has to offer in the classroom or outside of it. A good part of what you will learn here will come from the faculty who will teach you in the classes you will take, while much of it will come from the people sitting here with you today, your peers and colleagues. Taken together, these teachers of yours will give you the liberal education that is Yale's hallmark. And by the time you graduate, you will have furnished your mind in the broadest possible sense, not by pursuing narrow specialized study, but instead by searching for new knowledge, new perspectives, new ways of looking at the world, and by adding your own. If you make good use of this place, you will discover fields of knowledge that are completely new to you, that you haven't even heard of, and you will open yourselves to them and learn from them. And when you get to know your colleagues sitting around here today, something else you will discover is that you come from every possible walk of life, bringing with you every imaginable talent, every experience, every worldview. Learn from them too. As a community, you are politically liberal, conservative, or moderate. You are people with and without disabilities. You observe different religions or none. Roughly two out of three of you attended public high schools. About one out of five of you are eligible for federal Pell Grants. Over one out of six of you are first generation college students. About one out of nine of you are international students from over 50 countries. More than half of you identify as students of color. And you are of all genders and sexualities. We should take none of this for granted. Think for a minute that for most of Yale's history, as recently as 50 years ago, even when US was able to send humans to the moon, women were not allowed to receive an education in Yale College. I think of my mother, who along with my late father, immigrated to California from South Korea. Now one of the world's most prosperous countries, uh, and here's where I get to ask, how many of you know BTS? Okay, good, I think you can see it. No, no hands raised behind me, right? <laughs> South Korea was one of the poorest countries back then. But even in the 1950s, right after a devastating war, my mom was able to receive a college education from Korea's version of Yale. And without the opportunities afforded to her, I know that I would not be standing here at, as a faculty member of this uh, great place. You are coming to Yale as it marks a historic milestone, the anniversary of 50 years of co-education in Yale College and 150 years of co-education in the graduate and professional schools. This year, the university honors the monumental value that co-education has brought to our institution, not only because co-education was such a huge step forward in creating today's Yale community, but also because it went to the heart of a Yale liberal education, open to all people as well as to all ideas. You will hear the word excellent and diversity together here again and again, at Yale they go hand in hand. If you look at Yale's history, 
as its excellence has continued and grown every decade, every year, so has the diversity of its students, staff, and faculty. The connection between excellence and diversity has long captured the attention of researchers who study collective intelligence and who investigate whether groups are smarter than the individuals in them. Carnegie Mellon management uh, professor Anita Woolley, who studies teams and what makes them stronger, found that it is not the group's average IQ or even the IQ of its smartest member. And it isn't the number, it is not the number of extroverted members or the group's motivation. What she found, and here she is in her own words, was that the individual skills most critical for collective intelligence are those that enhance the ability of group members to collaborate effectively, or the skills that enrich the collaboration by bringing a sufficient diversity of perspectives. These are the conditions of collective intelligence, and what they do is they predict a group's superior performance on a wide range of complex tasks. This could mean playing checkers, brainstorming possible uses of a brick, optimizing choices in behavioral economic games, or even competing in League of Legends. Yale embraces the idea of collective intelligence, which depends on people who bring diverse ways of looking at the world and who know how to communicate and collaborate. And here you are. You have earned a place in this community, which is itself a team, because of the promise you have shown in what you will contribute to it and to the communities and teams you will join after you graduate. And as you think about how to do that, you can start by asking how to maximize your collective intelligence by leveraging your different backgrounds, views, talents, and interests, and how you can enhance your social sensitivity as a community by learning how to see the world through each other's eyes. Uh, as a psychology professor, let me demonstrate one way you might start out on this road. And so here, please uh, pull out your printed program, and inside you'll find an insert. Take it out, and you'll see the, one, the insert with a big image in it, on it. Okay. So look at the image, uh, the first image on the top. Okay. And then name out loud, uh, when I say go, what you see. Okay, go. Good, thank you. Uh, if you first saw a duck, raise your hand. Okay, and if you first saw a rabbit, raise your hand. Okay, half, half are pretty evenly split. Um, right? And then now you can try seeing it both ways. If you saw it as a duck, try to see it as a rabbit, and vice versa. If you have trouble seeing it both ways, anyone having trouble seeing it both ways? The admissions director is behind me. <laughs> so this simple demonstration uh, shows a fundamental principle of psychology that we all experience the world differently. Our perceptual interpretations, as in the case you just saw, but also our memories, our thoughts, our attitudes are all constructs of the mind. And they differ across people, even when considering the same object, event, or evidence. Yale will expose you to views different from your own, and when it does, you can start by finding common ground with people when you don't agree with them. So before you put away your insert, look, take one more look at it, this time on the bottom uh, cartoon, uh, and you can see that there are two armies facing each other. Okay, Think of US-China trade relations. And then look at the army on the bottom, and at the front of that army on the bottom, there's a general who's looking back uh, at his troops, and he's urging them with the following uh, comic, uh, with the following caption, there can be no peace until they renounce their rabbit god and accept our duck god. Okay, so imagine what happens when the opposing troops realize they are serving the same flag. And so you can ask yourself, what is my flag? So here's our final uh, exercise. Please shout out the answer to the following, your first quiz at Yale. What's the research university most committed to teaching and learning? Please shout it out. Yeah. Good. 
you are all now members of Bulldog Nation. With the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and alumni, faculty, and staff, and with each other, you have common ground, an immediate shared bond that is more than tribal. It goes deeper to the intellectual curiosity and the commitment to community that have brought you all here. You have arrived at a place that values difference and actively seeks it out. It is how professors and students find and test knowledge, and it is how the university equips its students to become leaders and citizens of the world. But here, the value of seeking difference is even more than that. It is taken as the article of faith. It is the coin of the realm. It is one of the bedrock principles that governs us in and out of the classroom. And so let me assume that you came here not only to find knowledge, but to live lives of consequence. And if that's true, you have come to the right place. And as you take your first steps, then, you will need to become comfortable with difference, not just to accept it or tolerate it, but to insist on it. You will find guides everywhere in the classes you will take, the activities you will join, and most of all, again, from the people sitting around you right now, your peers and classmates. All of them are part of the liberal education that awaits you. Your life at Yale has started, and in just a few days, you will be enrolling in classes, joining organizations, or training with your teams. And as you do that, here's what I hope you will do. If you are a duck person, go find those rabbit people and find common ground with them. If you are studying all duck courses, go find the rabbit courses and see what they can teach you. And when you find yourself rallying around a duck flag, take a good hard look at the rabbit flag across the field and the people rallying around it, and remember that you are all Yaleys. Members of the class of 2023, transfer students, Eli Whitney students, visiting international students, you all belong to Yale, and Yale belongs to you. Welcome. Thank you.
Good morning. To all Eli Whitney students, transfer students, visiting international students, and first-year Yale College students, welcome to Yale. On behalf of my colleagues here on stage, I extend a warm greeting to the families here today and thank you all for joining us. Please remember these first moments of your loved one's college career are very special and I'm glad you can share them with us today. Usually, in an opening address, university presidents tell undergraduates that they are amazing individuals, selected from the, among the most talented high school students in the world today. This is, of course, true. But it is not the point I want to make. Instead, I want to encourage you to approach college unimpressed by how impressive you are have more questions than answers. Admit to being puzzled or confused. Be willing to say, I don't know, but I want to find out. And most important, have the courage to say, perhaps I am wrong and others are right. This is how you will learn the most from your teachers and classmates. And this is why we have all come to this place. We are here to ask questions, questions about one another and about the world around us. We are here at Yale to nurture a culture of curiosity. This summer, I read a story about Isidore Isaac Rabi, one of the country's most extraordinary scientists. He remembered an important question his mother asked him. Brought to this country as an infant, Robbie conducted research into particle beams that led to the development of the MRI and many other scientific advances, and he won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1944. Robbie's parents ran a small grocery store in Brooklyn. His mother had no formal education. The other moms, he remembered, asked their children every afternoon if they had learned anything in school. Not my mother, he recalled. She always asked me a different question. Izzy, she would say, did you ask a good question today? He believed her reminder to ask good questions helped set him on a path to become a distinguished scientist. So to all the families here today, when you call your Yale students, when you ask them about their classes and their roommates and the food, remember also to ask them about their questions. Imagine all the great discoveries that have come from asking a question. From Newton's theory of gravity to the astonishing breakthroughs in quantum science, some of which are happening here at Yale. When a musician experiments with a new melody or a sociologist observes a social interaction, they ask why and what would happen if. Their curiosity lights up our world and points us in new directions. Self-discoveries come from asking questions, too. What do you learn when you ask yourself, why do I believe that? Why do I believe that? Or, why did I do that? I think of these lines from the poet Billy Collins. The trouble with poetry is that it encourages the writing of more poetry. I would say the same of asking questions. One leads to another, 
which opens doors to still another. Sometimes our questions lead to a dead end. We realize the question we asked wasn't quite right, and a door closes. But along the way, we have learned something. Perhaps in the future, we will ask better questions. In a well-known scene in the movie The Pink Panther, Inspector Clouseau checks into a hotel in Germany. He sees a dachshund in the lobby, and he asks the hotel owner, does your dog bite? The owner replies, no. When Clouseau goes to pet the dog, it bites his hand hard. Shocked, he tells the hotel owner, I thought you said your dog doesn't bite. The owner replies, that is not my dog. <laughs> Inspector Clouseau simply hadn't asked the right question. So years ago, I taught an undergraduate seminar. And one of the questions on the application of the course was, what is the most important thing you've changed your mind about? We were surprised that quite a few students reported that they had not changed their minds about anything at all. So we decided to accept to the class only students who had changed their minds about something important. Be willing to change your mind. Ask questions and embrace Yale's culture of curiosity. Be open to different viewpoints and experiences. See them as opportunities to learn even if sometimes you get your hand bit. Now, I'm a social psychologist, and as a graduate student at Yale, my curiosity was sparked by the study of emotions and by a question my undergraduate advisor had asked me. Peter, why do you think humans even have emotions? What do they do for us? One of my major areas of research ever since has been emotional intelligence. In our earliest work, we described emotional intelligence as a set of skills that one can learn that helps you extract the information, the data contained in emotions, either your own or somebody else's. After a few years of research, it was obvious to me and my collaborators that we weren't asking exactly the right question. We needed to be able to show that emotional intelligence predicted outcomes in life the ability to form friendships, succeed in school, work as part of a team, and the like. Trouble was, how do you go about measuring the skills of emotional intelligence? We asked ourselves a series of questions, starting with, well, how are personal, how are personal characteristics typically measured by psychologists? <coughs> the answer is by asking people to rate themselves. These are called self-reports. But this led to approaches that disappointed us. How would someone know if they were the kind of person who was especially good at identifying emotions or understanding them or managing them or using emotions? Perhaps thinking that you had spectacular emotional intelligence was a sign of not having much of it at all. So that door closed. We asked ourselves another question. If we wanted to know if someone possessed the skills of a great baseball player, hitting, throwing, catching the ball, running bases effectively, how confident would we be of self-report? The answer is not very. All ball players think they're going to be the next A-Rod. When I was a child, I thought I'd be the next Carl Yastrzemski on the Boston Red Sox while my brother played in the backyard. But in fact, I barely got out of Little League with my pride intact. Why would emotional intelligence be any different than baseball? If we wanted to know whether someone had high EI, we needed to assess these skills as abilities. And what would an ability measure of emotional intelligence even look like? So 
asking ourselves these questions led to an answer that made more sense. And our ability-based measure of emotional intelligence has now been used in hundreds of studies. Knowing that we didn't have all the answers and taking an inquisitive, curious attitude allowed us the opportunity to create something relatively new. So what questions will you ask? What will spark your curiosity? Not long ago, I received an email from a very proud Yale College parent. He told me about his son, who heard 77 different speakers during his first year at Yale. 77. He had learned from thinkers and leaders across the political spectrum. He had attended events organized by a wide range of campus organizations. What a way to spend a first year. Could you do this and not change your mind about something important? And it turns out this student is also very good at asking questions. He's doing a project where in the past year he has interviewed dozens of people, scholars and activists and journalists and entrepreneurs from many different sectors. Like so many students, faculty and staff, he is nurturing a culture of curiosity at Yale. Indeed, the Yaleys who have come before you have asked a dazzling array of questions. I think of the pioneers of co-education. 50 years ago, in 1969, 588 women came to study in Yale College. They entered what had long been an all-male institution, and they asked questions that hadn't been asked before. We will commemorate this milestone along with the 150th anniversary of women entering Yale's School of Art throughout this year. I think of Margaret Warner, class of 1971. An award-winning journalist, she knows how to ask brilliant questions and has reported from war zones for decades, witnessing history firsthand, trying to understand our world. I think, too, of Alice Young, also class of 1971. She looked around this campus and asked, why weren't there more students from public schools? So she became an ambassador for Yale back in her home state of Hawaii. And she was one of the founders of the Asian American Students Alliance, which also celebrates its 50th anniversary this year. And we remember other important anniversaries and the curious students who were part of these changes. In 1969, thanks to student efforts, the Afro-American Cultural Center, known as the House, opened. And what is now the Department of African American Studies was created. That same year, students established the Yale chapter of Mecha. And I believe we owe a debt of gratitude, a debt of gratitude to all the courageous pioneers throughout our history who have made Yale what it is today. What questions will you ask? And how will your questions transform Yale and improve the world? Your time at Yale is an unparalleled opportunity to engage with a wide range of people, ideas, and experiences. More than at any other point in your life, you will have the means and opportunity to hear from and converse with world-renowned experts in many fields. You will have the chance to create knowledge through rigorous research and attend arts, literary, and athletic events that challenge and inspire you. You will spend time with peers whose lives have been wildly different from your own. What if you nurtured your own curiosity by pushing yourself beyond the familiar and the comfortable? What would that look like for you? 
It might mean attending a talk on a topic you don't know much about or by someone who doesn't share your beliefs or conducting research in a Yale laboratory or collaborating on an exhibit at one of our amazing museums. Or perhaps your curiosity will be sparked by having coffee with a classmate who comes from a different part of the world or a different place on the political spectrum. And when you do these things, when you take advantage of the opportunities Yale makes possible, what questions will you ask? There is so much we don't know. Let us embrace together our humility, our willingness to admit what we have yet to discover. After all, if you knew all the answers, you would not need Yale. And if humanity knew all the answers, the world would not need Yale. So what questions will you ask today, tomorrow, the next day? And in the days, months, and years after I have shaken your hand at commencement, let me know. Let me know what questions you've asked that have changed your life. Good luck, class of 2023.
My beloved Yale family, as we ready ourselves to step out onto new ground in this daunting yet inspiring liminal space of the unknown next, we begin a poignant turn of goodbyes and hellos that invite laughter, tears, challenge, choice, discovery, and pride. Let us go forth with deep trust in certain knowledge that in this place, each and every one of you are welcome, that in this place, we will both stumble and soar, that in this place, love surrounds us, beauty can surprise us, in this place, light and truth awaits us. On this day and every day forward, may all that is holy shine upon us and tenderly bless our every breath. May we go in shalom, in salam, in shanti. May we go in peace. Let us begin. <laughs>